Hello guys, I have two different implementations for class account holder. So first implementation is inside file account holder 1.cpp where I have declared class account holder and the name of the account holder I have taken that as a character array. In the second declaration, the name of the account holder is taken as a character pointer. So that is inside account holder 2.cpp. So that is the only difference between the classes. In the first class it is character array and in the second class it is character pointer. Now which are the functions I have implemented? Here I have implemented default constructor, parameterized constructor and display function. Here also I have implemented default constructor, parameterized constructor, display function and one more function I have to write here which is destructor function. This destructor function is because I have allocated a memory for account holder name inside both the constructors and to free that memory I have written the destructor. So here the delete statement is there. Now in the main function suppose I create one account holder object a1. So here it is account holder a1 and I am passing some parameters say account number is 1 the name of the holder is abc and some balance which is 10,000 and I declare another object account holder a2 and this object is created from a1 object so it is declared something like this. So what I want a2 object which I, I, I create should be exactly copy of the a1 object so I declare a2 object something like this. So it will call the copy constructor because I am creating one object from another existing object so it will call the copy constructor. Now compile if, if you do not write the copy constructor compiler's copy constructor will get call and if you write your own copy constructor that will get call. So right now I do not have any copy constructor in my both the classes. So after that suppose I display both the objects a1 dot display and a2 dot display. Now same thing I copy paste inside the main function of other account holder class where a name is a pointer. So here now I will compile and run both the programs. So let me first compile account holder 1.cpp g plus plus account holder 1.cpp hyphen o acc holder one so it is getting compile and acc holder one if i run it it is running also so it is displaying both the objects so account holder one dot cpp is running fine now let me compile and run account holder two dot cpp where there is a pointer data member so i will change the names of the file and executable it is getting compiled here and when i run this so you will see that it is throwing runtime error. So this error is runtime error. So if you see the output, it is displaying both the objects, but after that it is saying double free message regarding memory corruption. And after that it's giving some backtrace. So that is runtime error. Now let's see why this runtime error is thrown in this program. Hello guys, we have implemented account holder class in two different ways. In the first declaration, I have taken the name of the account holder as character array and in second kind of declaration, the name of the account holder is character pointer. Now suppose I have created a1 object in main function to which I am passing the values 1, abc and 10,000. So for that, how will be the object create, how will be the object created in each declaration? So if I declare account holder something like this, then it will allocate 32 bytes of memory. So suppose this is the object A1. So to this object, first one is account number. Then here it is ACC holder name. And here it is ACC balance. So the values which I am passing from here, 1, ABC and 10,000, those values will be stored in corresponding members. Now if I declare account holder class something like this, then the size of the account holder class is 16 bytes. So how the A1 object will get created? 16 bytes will be allocated onto the stack. 
so id is 1 that is okay then in the parameterized constructor of this class i have allocated a memory for this name pointer so there will be some address over here and at that address onto the heap the memory is allocated and at that memory the name of the account holder is stored and then 10000 value is stored over here so this is how the objects will be there in case of each declaration now suppose in the main function i have written the second statement account holder a2 inside parenthesis a1 so i am creating a2 object from a1 object so we have seen that if i declare the class something like this it is not throwing any error it is getting compiled successfully and it is also running but if i declare a class something like this then it is getting compiled but when i run the program it is throwing runtime error so we will see why it is throwing a runtime error now there are few functions which are provided by the compiler so there are four functions which are provided by the compiler that means if i do not write those four functions compiler will have its own copy for them so which are the four functions first one is default constructor then destructor copy constructor and copy assignment operator so if i do not write the default constructor compiler will have its own default constructor which will initialize the object to garbage values then if i do not write the destructor compiler will have its own destructor same for the copy constructor and copy assignment operator so in this declaration of a2 object i am creating a2 from a1 object so in this case copy constructor will get called now since i do not write or i did not write copy constructor in my class compiler's copy constructor will get called and it does the shallow copy for data members now what is shallow copy there are two terms one is shallow copy other one is deep copy now compiler will go for shallow copy by default that means this a2 object when it is declared it will allocate in this case suppose i declare class something like this so in this case a2 object will allocate 32 bytes and after the memory is allocated compiler's copy constructor will get called so when compiler's copy constructor will get called it will copy this one here as it is then it will copy this name here as it is and this value will also get copy so each member is copied as it is into the other object now this copying is called as shallow copy member wise copy is called as shallow copy again here also if i declare object a2 like this compiler will allocate 16 bytes of memory and compiler's copy constructor will go for shallow cap copy that means this one will get copied as it is now here it is 1000 address so this address is also copied as it is here so by this what happens now both of the objects is having separate pointer and both the pointers are pointing to the same memory block onto the heap and then 10,000 is copied here so this will be the diagram for shallow copy in case of second declaration when the member of the class is pointer now after that in the main function when return 0 is encountered scope of both the objects is over so if a destructor is there inside class then this will call the destructor for both the objects so first destructor will get call for a2 object and then destructor will get call for a1 object now in this declaration there is no destructor as such because there is no dynamic memory allocation but in this declaration of class there is a destructor so here what happens when a2 object goes out of scope destructor will delete the memory which is for this pointer of a2 that means this memory is deleted for a2 object name of the a2 object is deleted and after that when destructor will get call for a1 object then a1 object name will get deleted so the same memory block will get deleted twice so when you are trying to delete that second time it will throw a runtime error that's why in the implementation in case of implementation of this class we are getting runtime error when i try to run this code so let's debug this code so let's compile this program with hyphen g option for debugging after that i will say gdb and dot slash acc holder to so first thing is i need to put breakpoint so b space main 
after that i will run r for run so it is at the first statement where a1 object is declared now this will call the parameterized constructor and object a1 is created after that it will create a2 object and that will get create using compiler's copy constructor so it will go for shallow copy as i told you in the theory part after that it will display both the objects so a1 dot display will display a1 object then a2 dot display will display a2 object and after that when return 0 is encountered before that it will call destructor for both the objects so suppose i press s step into so it is going inside the destructor now this destructor is called for a2 object which will delete the name of a2 so that is block on heap and now the destructor is called second time for a1 object so when it is called for a1 object it is trying to delete the same block second time you can see and now here if i press n and for next then it will throw a runtime error so this is the reason for the runtime error now this situation is called as dangling pointer situation it is called as dangling pointer situation because wh when the memory block of a2 objects name is freed then a1 objects name pointer is still pointing to that block which is already deleted so such pointer which is which is pointing to the memory or which is pointing to the deleted memory is called as dangling pointer so how to remove this dangling pointer that we will see in the next video so please subscribe to my channel i will see you again